Well, today we're in a different vehicle. This is the Lexus IS350 F Sport. This is the all wheel drive model. I have a lot of good things and some interesting things to say, hopefully. So let's dive in. Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Gooch. And today I'm in, well, my first Lexus I've ever actually reviewed. Um, so I'm trying to expand and do more, uh, some different vehicles uh, in all scopes. Um, and so working with Toyota, I got into the Lexus IS350. Now this is the F Sport trim. Uh, it is an all wheel drive model. Um, so it has the six speed. I believe they actually have a rear wheel drive model which has an eight speed if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this is the all wheel drive model. So I'm gonna look at this review and this review specifically is gonna be from the perspective of daily use driver on roads. I'm not a track person. Uh, it's not that I wouldn't love to drive one of these on the track. I absolutely would. We don't have any tracks anywhere near me and I've never driven on a track actually. So um, I've ridden in a car on a track, but I've never driven. So this is coming from how fun is this to actually drive as an actual daily driver and how does it work on the actual roads? And if I wanna get into it real quick in my honest opinions about this, this car is a ton of fun to drive. It really is. Now, is it a perfect car? No, there are some things. Um, it is a smaller sedan, poopy sedan, um, but it drives very well. It handles very well, and it's got a lot of spunk in it. It's got a 3.5 uh, liter V6 in it. Uh, I think it's like 311 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque, but when you're talking about a car this size, it's got a lot of pep to it. It really does. Now, they claim I think it's like 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds. I haven't tested that yet. Um, I will, to be honest about it. Uh, so I'll figure that out and I will put my stuff down below. But it, it handles really well. It looks awesome on the outside and very awesome on the inside. This has the leather red, uh, the red leather interior, and it is an awesome red. It is a poppy red. It just stands out, and it's it's just really fun to actually be in this vehicle. It's just it, it's a lot of fun. It's got a pretty large display. I think it's made in. 8 inch display, 10 inch display, 10 inch that's what it is, uh, touch screen. It does have this trackpad down below, which I'll be honest, I, I understand that they used to, basically everything used to be input kind of via trackpad, now you have the touchpad as well, um, so it, it changes there a little bit, but the trackpad is kind of annoying in my opinion. Now I'm not a big proponent of this, this trackpad thing. It makes a quick and easy thing without me reaching forward. Um, but it's nowhere near as intuitive as a touchscreen because you're not gonna just point and go. And it's not like, it's uh, it's not as easy to use as like, sorry about that, my camera fell over. Um, but the trackpad itself, it's not as intuitive as like a mouse, but it is kind of like a mouse and how it actually controls the screen. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. It's, it's one of those things that I think they could just get rid of that altogether. Just go touch panel, touch screen. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go too much further into that, but I'm not a big fan of the trackpad. I really am not. Um, the Sport, they have an Eco mode, a Normal mode, and then a Sport and a Sport Plus mode. Um, quick and easy from this dial here on the actual uh, console here. Makes it really quick and easy to, to get into the mode that you want to do. That's going to change your handling. It's going to change your shifting. It's going to change the power to the engine. Um, and it does... Quite, it, it actually does make a difference. It handles a lot differently when you're in those different modes, which, you know, depending on what you want to do and depending on, you know, where you're driving, it could make a huge difference in that regard. Um, heated seats, uh, cooled seats. These leather seats are awesome. They heat up pretty fast. Um, I honestly think that in my friend, uh, my wife and my, some of my friends that I've ridden in this already with me, same thing. 
our they think our van maybe heats up a little bit faster our Toyota Sienna for the heated seats part portion of it I don't notice that so much but I have been told that from uh, other people that have sat in the seat with me uh, going for rides uh, cool seats work awesome uh, I have driven that it is cooler outside so it's not n a big necessity but if I throw it on high for for cooled seats it doesn't take very long and I'm already here I'm already feeling it if you actually put your hand by the seat you can actually feel the air blowing through it does quite a good job actually uh, and that's getting cool <laughs> so and there are three modes for both of those settings heated steering wheel as well on this specific uh, trim level um, quick and easy climate control for both passenger and driver uh, completely separated and I do like the physical buttons on certain things I think with the heated seats and stuff they they take up so much room with it I wish that they would actually figure out a different way of doing it um, and that's probably the best way to, to, to say it is they probably could have trimmed this up a little bit and changed that out and gained more room here because if you want to see one thing is it doesn't have wireless charging in here at all and I'm not uh, a big fan of the wireless charging they have in most of the vehicles right now anyway um, I'm hoping that they fix that and get higher power to the, the wireless chargers and more capability um, specifically with Apple's MagSafe, it seems like Toyotas hate them. Um, so I want to see that. But at the same time, uh, USB ports. In order to get the USB ports, we got to go in here, and there's two of them. But they're not USB-C; they are still USB-A. So that's you know, in a 2021 trim uh, car, uh, it's kind of one of those things that I, I wish that they would change a little bit. Um, you know, for what it is, uh, for how everything is intuitively laid out here. It's pretty easy. It still does have a CD player, which is crazy because you don't see that in cars anymore, um, which I think begs to show that they're not fully updated yet for to the modern age here. But it does have a, a touchscreen that has Apple CarPlay and stuff in it. So it's kind of this mix. Also that you're going to notice here on the dash is we do actually have a clock, an actual clock, um, which if you've, I guess I've never been probably said on the channel, you either like this or you, you don't. Um, it adds a layer of sophistication it does it's really what it's for right there um, I, pr I like digital clocks especially digital clocks that I can change uh, most vehicles you can't really change it that's the clock and that's what it is I would love to see them bring in a digital screened clock that you can make analog or digital or whatever you want um, I think that would be great because then you could make it what you want it to be that would be fantastic and I haven't seen that yet so um, having the the physical looking clock it looks pretty neat and it works pretty it look, works like a clock um, but that's something to say as well um, it does have the six-speed automatic transmission we do have a manual mode where we can pop it out and uh, go into uh, manual drive mode and in manual mode um, we do have paddle shifters where we actually can paddle shift our ups and downs from the actual steering wheel right here um, and so, but if we're in automatic mode, those paddle shifters aren't going to do anything. So you do have to actually take the shifter, throw it into manual mode, then you can actually shift. And it will not also allow you to shift early, right? You can't shift too early. It's, it is intuitive and in, in how it works, but at the same time, they don't want you to shift too high, too fast, and just throw your RPMs way down. So it is, uh, I guess, helping keep the, the tune that try to make it as safe as possible I guess in how you do this and make it run as good as possible but uh, in the sport modes and stuff it actually does glow orange when you get to the RPMs that are ready to shift so how it operates is pretty straightforward I'll be honest um, yeah so to get out of that to go a little bit further into it so technology does have the uh, lane monitoring and the adaptive cruise control which makes that part pretty easy and reliable and uh, makes driving down the highway uh, nice and uh, I guess relaxing I guess for the most part moving on to the left of the steering wheel where we have some uh, driver controls as well we have automatic uh, high beams on it basically you can turn it on automatic or not so if you're driving down the road it'll automatically take it out of high beams if somebody's on, you have an oncoming car if you're driving too close to somebody uh, you do have the view camera view where you can actually pull up the 360 view on the actual touch panel and see all the way around your car now though of course that's only gonna work when you're driving I think it's under like five miles an hour uh, is when it actually will allow it to come on so if I go under five miles an hour here I can kick it on and actually see it there. Um, 
but if you're in five, you know, if you're driving uh, too fast, it's not going to actually come on. Or maybe it's 10 miles an hour, actually. Yeah. Um, also, we have our ASC, which I think is adaptive sound control or whichever, but that's basically if you want to actually hear more of the engine noise. You know, it's actually replicated through the speakers in the cabin. Now, as far as I can tell, you have to be in normal or sport mode for it to work. If you're in eco mode, it's not going to do it. Um, but it's if you're going to go in high RPM mode, having that ASC, you'll actually be able to turn it up or down, uh, and it's just a, a digital control there where you can adjust um, up and down, or actually analog, sorry. It's, it's not just on off, it's completely analog. And while you're driving, you can increase how much the engine sound you're getting. I might probably replicate that here in a second so you can understand what that sounds like. Um, and then up from that, we can actually see our odometer control, stuff like that. That's kind of hidden back here to get to that odometer control, um, to take a peek at where you're at, how many miles you have in the car, how many miles you have on your trip. It's not up on top, it's not in your, your steering wheel, it's actually down below on the left side there, which is a little weird, but at the same time, it actually, how often do you use it anyway? Usually when you fill up with gas maybe, and that's about it. So. Um, if you get any glare, I apologize. The sun's kind of been going crazy today. But that's uh, most of it. We have our, down here as well, we do have our trunk uh, popper here. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, in our, our gas uh, knob here to open up the, the door to, to get fuel up. So with that said, let's, uh, let's take a little cruise. So another mode on here is the lane assist mode. Uh, which also has what they call um, lane centering, uh, which right now I have active uh, driving down the highway. Now it is not self-driving, so you're not gonna be taking your hands off the wheel to allow it to actually drive into the center of the, of the road. However, it does give you a little boost if you start coming out of that, the center of the lane, it's, it kind of pushes you back towards it. Um, not drastic amounts, it's very similar to what I have found on the Toyotas that have the capability uh, of at least of the, the lane assisting itself to keep you in the middle. Um, definitely more than the 20, the older 2020 models, definitely as good as probably the most 2021s. I think they can go a lot further with this technology. I think they, I'm hoping that in the, in the next couple of years, Toyota really comes a lot further advanced in their lane assist modes. Um, but it is there, it does help, but it's, it's, it's an assist, it's not anything more than just assisting you. So if you start drifting, gives you a nudge. Probably the best way to put it. So, uh, but yeah, that's that. I wanted to give you guys a heads up at least of what it sounds like when you're actually cruising up from a, a low rate of speed to high speed. So let's uh, put it on sport mode and we'll get going. Give her that so without going too crazy and breaking the law that's pretty awesome I wanted to actually have the vehicle running while I'm doing this rock around, so we are going to have a little bit of engine noise, but I wanted you to hear what it sounds like too. And I apologize for the wind, but it is windy and I'm trying to get in a spot that's less today. But right away, you can see the headlights are really aggressive. Now this is just kind of your daytime running lights. Uh, and I'll throw the lights on, I'll do it at night. Uh, but blackout grill with this specific mode here, um, my Lexus emblem. Come around, we have our wheels. Now these are really good looking wheels in my opinion. They did a really good job with these guys. Uh, we have our F Sport badge there. Over on the side. Get to the back panel here. Also LED rear tail lights. Um, the, in, at night, when we do this at night, you'll see this, the actual red goes all the way across. Um, looks really, really good. We have our IS350 all wheel drive badge there. F Sport badge on the left. And then we have our tailpipes and they look good and clean. Come around the side here. Another F-Sport badge there. 
and it's just a good, clean-looking vehicle. We have our front camera hidden basically right in front, on top of our Lexus uh, emblem here. Underneath the mirrors, of course, that's where you're going to expect to find them there. And then what you can see back here and touch is the rear camera right above the license plate. Now, one thing I will say is the cameras themselves are, are fine. There's nothing fancy about them. I wish they would use a little bit higher quality camera on a nicer car like this, but they're just the standard Toyota cameras that you're going to get on any of the Toyota line as well. So that's something to say. So now with the lights on, you can see that tail light shining all the way across looks really, really good. And now we have our headlights on and they are LED and they work really well without getting too aggressive and up in people's faces when they're, uh, especially when you have cross traffic, it doesn't put a whole lot of brightness up too high. It's, it's concentrated on the road. They did a really good job, in my opinion, on the headlights. And my, actually, uh, I had one of my friends that actually said, wow, these headlights work really, really well, and they're not too uh, in your face. One of the other, other options is the is this illuminated door pick the sills right here, so you can see we're actually in the car here. Bring up a little more, here we go. And it's illuminated at night, and I wanted to show the back of the vehicle too, so I'm gonna pop the trunk and show you what the, inside the, the, the back here, we actually have the illumination here with our Lexus and then the model number, so it looks really clean and awesome. So there is something different from my, my other 2021. This actually, there's no lever up there. It's actually just push, and that's how we get to the gas cap. I apologize. I, I think I said there was a lever down there before. I uh, thought wrong, so that's just push. Over. Now let's open up the front end. Let's see what's up in here. Oh, I love gas shock hoods. And there we are. There's the powertrain that powers this bad boy. They got a nice, beautiful Lexus cover on it. Easy access to the air filter and battery right there. Um, just off to the side, but yeah, not up front technically, but easy access. That's always a big item. We got our oil here. I'm assuming the oil filter's probably on the bottom, which is gonna be a little bit harder to access like they are on most Toyota vehicles. Um, but yeah, good clean engine compartment there. Now I wanted to go into a few other features that are actually on this car that are not so much in the driving portion of it. Um, we do have electric, you know, power locks, power windows, all the stuff that you would normally uh, assume that you're going to get anymore. Uh, we do have a sunroof here that has actually power sliding. Uh, we can change that up here as well, obviously where it goes. We, we do have the lights, we have the SOS mode built into this guy. Uh, there's a lot of modes built into this. Um, that you're gonna find creature comforts that are in most modern vehicles. To be honest about it, it is what it is. Um, this sits really low and the, the, the driver's seat and actually the passenger seat as well, we can adjust how low it goes. I can bring it down, I can bring it up. Uh, I can change how it actually operates like you would expect on a four-way seat. Um, me coming from driving trucks, vans, and SUVs typically, this vehicle does sit very low to the ground. However, I will be honest with you, the first time I actually sat in this car and drove it, within about five to 10 minutes, it brought the fun of driving back. Now I like driving, I really do. Driving vans and trucks, I, I, I do. But driving this vehicle brought back some fun of driving that I haven't had for a while. And I'm not talking fun of driving to, you know, I'm not breaking the law, right? I'm staying within the speed limits and stuff for the most part, right? Um, driving like it would but it's it's a lot of fun and like I was talking with my wife and some friends you're not buying this car because it's economical you're not buying this car because I can take my family in it right you're not buying this car because oh I can get into it at a low price maybe if you're looking at the sportiness of it at the cost that it's actually associated at that I can see but this does not scream efficiency or anything like that. Yeah, there's an eco mode on the dial. Yeah, I can get a little bit more out of each drop of fuel I put into it. But that's not why you bought this car. This car 
is fun. It brings some of what I would say the sporty track experience into a standard on the road car. Now, I have read some stuff on this car. I've seen a couple videos of this car. It's not a car that screams track, 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 because from what I can tell is, yeah, it's fine. It's not really built so much for the track as it is for bringing that, that sporty material out to the, the normal open road. This vehicle has all-wheel drive, this specific one that I'm in, and it sticks to the road very well. Um, and that's what you want if you're looking for a daily driver. I'm not looking to break the, the rear end loose. I'm not looking for over and under steer and stuff. I'm looking for it to actually keep, be safe and do what it needs to do. This vehicle does it, and it does so looking really well. Now, here's a fun story for you that was the first time I actually uh, was, I went to, it was uh, the second night I had it actually. The second night I actually had this vehicle. I went to actually pick up my buddy who is uh, who was actually out with uh, some coworkers and uh, his wife was gonna go pick him up but she said, hey, why don't you pick him up in the Lexus and give him a ride in the Lexus? I'm like, all right, that sounds great. That way he can, I can get his opinion on some things as well. Um, so I drove to the, the bar that he was actually at with his friends, with his coworkers and while I got there, I pulled in and uh, texted to, to, you know, for him to come out. Within a minute or two of me sitting in the parking lot, there were some people out there actually just sitting, probably maybe waiting for rides or waiting for some friends. And they just kind of, they were staring at the car. And one of the women, women uh, just started walking down the, kind of in front of the car, just staring at the car. And kind of came around the car. And, you know, I'm not really paying attention so much. I was on my phone. And then she literally came up to the window, so I, I rolled the window down. I had to run it because he was just gonna be coming out. And she, without getting into the colorful language that she used, basically told me that she really liked the look of this car and told me it was an extremely sexy car. I have never, ever had anybody come up to me and say that. Now, I've never owned a really sporty car like this, but that literally, like, like seriously, did that just happen? Um, and it did. And it, you know, I I, I complimented her. I, I, or I, you know, I said thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really like the car as well. And um, yeah. And so that's where we are with the hat. But that kind of threw me off guard. I did not expect somebody to come up to the car and tell me how much they liked it and how much it looks awesome and sexy. Which is, hey, that's interesting. But that tells you how good this car is looking, right? Not just for me, I think it's a fantastic looking car. Um, I wish that it had a little more of a color pop, um, but I'm a color person, right? I like colors uh, so much more than just uh, raw earthy colors or grays or blacks. I like things that pop in terms of color fashion in that regard. So I don't know if this is a color that I would choose myself, probably not, but it does pop, it does. It looks good. And, and, the, the accent lines of this car look fantastic. So I wanted to bring that story in because it, it, I remember it and I'll probably remember it for a long time to come. Uh, the compliment I got on this car, this is the first car I've ever had, um, even for review or anything that, I've had some compliments on my cars in, in, in my lifetime, but nothing like that, which was, was fun. It was fun, so yeah. Now, one other thing I did want to touch on is the sound system in this vehicle. This does have the added premium surround sound uh, sound package by Mark Levinson. Um, it is a 17 speaker, 1800 watt system. And I know I could try to replicate it with the little microphone that's gonna be on that camera, and it's not gonna do it justice. And of course, I'm not gonna to try to play music out of this thing that's gonna get flagged. So what I'm gonna do is tell you this. It sounds awesome. Great bass, great, it sounds awesome. Now premium sound systems typically do sound good. This sounds beyond what I was expecting uh, for, for myself. Um, so the best way I can tell you is if you're interested in really hearing what this thing sounds like, go to one of your Lexus dealerships, ask for a test drive, or just sit in one and see and listen to what it sounds like. Because it sounds fantastic. It's the easiest way to say it. It sounds fantastic. Okay, so here we are. We have our navigation screen, uh, and I wanted to demonstrate the CarPlay mode, so that way at least you know what it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my iPhone in real quick now, and it should pop up to say, yep, 
Apple CarPlay to, oh, and there it actually went right to it. If it doesn't go right to it, um, down below, down here, down here, you hit the menu button, and on the menu, you can go to Apple CarPlay, and it'll go to CarPlay. And you can see that it is the full width of the display, um, no matter if you bring out the apps or, or any of the above, right? Uh, and so obviously Maps is gonna give you the, the whole item there, but you can cycle through your apps that are available on the screen and go from there. So I'm not gonna go into what CarPlay is, I just wanted to show and demonstrate what it looks like on this larger widescreen display on the Lexus. So it looks really good, really crisp, clean, and uh, I like the actual wider display, it just gives more information. So what are my final thoughts on this vehicle? I really like it, I really do. The front seat has plenty of room. The back seat, so long as you're not a really tall individual, um, I would say un under six feet, plenty of room. If you're over six feet, it's probably gonna get a little tight depending on how far back the front seats are. Um, the sound from the engine is sounds fantastic. The seats themselves, extremely comfortable. So this bucket seat that they have in the front, extremely comfortable. And of course, heated and cooled, you can't go wrong with that combination. All in all, this vehicle, uh, where it sits, it's priced at about 58,000 with all the features they added to this. Um, I cannot tell you whether or not it's worth that money to you. But depending on where I would be financially, would be whether or not I would be happy with this vehicle. I would tell you that I would be very happy driving this vehicle. This is a fun vehicle to drive around town. Um, it's it's equally good on the highway. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's the most efficient, but it's not built to be the efficient beast, right? It isn't. It's built to be fun. And I'll be as honest as I can, they hit the mark right on the head for what it is. For where it sits in the lineup and all the features they have put into this, it's a fun, good, great looking vehicle. Um, I can't wait to see where they head. Now, of course, this is my first vehicle of this type class that I've reviewed, so I have a hard time putting things against each other yet. Um, it's not perfect. This vehicle is not perfect, but I'll be honest. If, if you're thinking of, of a vehicle in this type of category, in this size range, go out to your local Lexus dealer and try it because it is, it, when I sat in it and drove it for the first time, I had fun. And I'll be honest, all of my, my kids and my wife and uh, a couple of my friends that I've had in here, all have had fun along the way as well. Everybody likes it. It looks good. It sounds great. Um, the quiet level with, the, you know, obviously you have engine noise because it's designed to be that way, but even, you know, turning it down and off, um, it sounds really good. So, look, Lexus, I'm looking forward to doing more with this brand because it's it's luxurious, but in its, its own way, and they did a great job with this specific car. So... Uh, I want to say thank you if you uh, if you watched the whole video. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking to the end. And if you have any questions, by all means, comment below or head over to techgooch.com and get a hold of me directly because I'm, I'm happy to share as many of my opinions as possible. And, of course, I only have a finite amount of time with, this, with each of these vehicles I get. Um, I wish I had a few more days with this one because it's a lot of fun. It really is. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on another video. See you soon.